Hello. Oh, hello. Got loads of people on. Hello. Does someone who's got access to the chat box just let me know that you can hear me? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hayley. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Oh. Hello, hi Sally, hi Colin, excellent. I'm pleased you can hear me. <clears throat> just gonna wait a couple more minutes, just to let a few more people come on. Quizzy rascals, looking quite posh. Thanks very much. <laughs> the thing is, I, I, I try to make myself look presentable on top, but actually, I've got Captain America pajama bombs on. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Quizzy rascals, love it. Hi, Chrissy. You okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Once you see some quizzes where Chris, we used to change the word Chris for quiz. So a quiz Tarrant, quiz Christopherson, Agatha Quiz D. No glittery jacket. I don't do them in my size. If anyone knows where I can get a, uh, a plus size sparkly jacket from, I'd appreciate it. Hello. Hello, Team Padrick. Hello, Team Thompson. How are you all? <clears throat> oh, we've got quite a few people in already. Excellent. Okay. So, just going to give it another minute uh, or so. Just going to help a couple of people with technical issues. Sharon and Tim Trin, hello. How are you? It's been such a long time. I'm thrilled you're on. Hi, Jess. <laughs> Hello, Wembley. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It's not Corona. <clears throat> T. Maxelson. Hello. Welcome back. How are you all? Right. Hello, hello, Team Finch. Hello, Archie Max. How are you? Are you all all right? Big money prizes. To be honest with you, just trying to think. Uh, I don't have anything to. Just my undying love and affection, really. This is the only prize I can give, and that's free. Um, okay, we've got loads of people in. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to get started then. Um, I normally leave it to about five past um, to let people come on, but hopefully by the time I've done a bit of a, an introduction, um, I've got a lot of new people tonight as well, which is brilliant. Um, so uh, yeah, this is now the uh, fourth quiz that we've done together. Um, so um, and the Wednesday they just come around so quickly, don't they? So it really feels like uh, it, it just it's, it's really lovely being able to spend uh, the evening um, with you all. Thanks, Haley. Hi, Jay. How are you? You're all right. Um, so yeah, it's just been so nice being able to, to do this and, and to have something to do and to spend the time with you in your company. It's been really lovely, and you'll make me laugh so much on the chat box as well for those of you that that, uh, that have it and can see it. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi, Linda and B. Hope you're you're both back in. Um, 
Um, hi, Mel and Iva. Oh, I'm so pleased you've come back because I know that you guys were here last week as well. So I'm thrilled that you've come back for some more. <laughs> um, so uh, hopefully this one will be uh, enough to bring you back in again next week. Um, so we've just got another influx of another 10 people that have joined. So let me just give me a second just to check my uh, Facebook notifications, just to make sure everyone has got in okay. Can't see any more problems. Uh, she says the, the dog is absolutely curled up like a British rail sandwich at the moment on the sofa, uh, fast asleep. So, uh, yeah, I had I just finished my tea. I had grilled cheese on crumpets. And I tell you, people, it is life changing. Um, so she's just had a tiny little piece of that. And now she's thinking, oh, I'm just going to go to bed now. Uh, so, yeah. OK. I think everyone's probably in by now that are going to join. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a number of people tonight. So uh, Quiz Agabusi, there you go. Chris Ag Agabusi, like that. Yeah, as another one. Uh, OK. So now I know you can all hear me. I'll explain how the evening is working. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is just run through it. Uh, our team Higgins, hello. Uh, I know you can't, you can see, you can't see the chat box. Uh, I'm so pleased you can join. That's brilliant. Um, so what I'm going to do is just going to run through the structure of the evening again. Um, so welcome again. There, uh, there are seven categories tonight. The music category again is split into two um and there are actually 10 general knowledge music questions and then 10 questions on a particular theme which i'll explain when we get there one point for each answer uh, each question that's answered correctly there are some questions i'll tell you at the start if more than one point is available we'll have a very short interval after the music round and uh quiz team aguilera Love it. Um, <laughs> you're all thinking of them now, aren't you? Uh, so there's going to be a short interval after the music round, which I'll give you the answers for the music round after we've done the break to give you a little bit of a chance to think about it. Feel free if you can, if you do have access to the to the chat box, please feel free to um, drop any any messages and stuff like that. Um, if you miss anything, miss any questions or you know mine or your internet drops out, uh, leave it blank and I'll do a repeat. I'll ask if anybody needs any repeats at the end of the round. So, um, yeah, I think that's about everything. Like I said, points are self-awarded. Um, I'll spell any stranger unusual words. Um, the total points available tonight is 105, which isn't the most points we've ever had, but it's more than last week. Um, I know most of you have got quite a lot of feedback about the family fortunes round last week, so I have done that again, and that'll be the last round. That'll be round seven. Uh, and, and some of the questions are quite funny. Uh, so I've done another uh, family fortunes round for that one. So you don't need to write these down, but I have done seven categories. So we've got general knowledge. Uh, round number two is a uh, let's get quizzical. Love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, round number one is gen general knowledge. Uh, round number two is around based on game shows. So it could be around particular game shows or hosts of things. Round three for no particular reason whatsoever. There's a round on famous Williams. Something a little bit different. Uh, so round number four is the music round, which is split into two rounds. Uh, for number five, which you'll all be desperate for, for points, is the kids round, which I know people mainly pick up their points from. Uh, and then round number six is food and drink. And then round number seven is family fortunes. And I hope that you'll really enjoy some of the questions they are genuine questions with genuine answers. And I'll explain that again when we get there. So we've got a few more. Quentin Quarantino. I like that. You'd struggle to say that if you'd had a drink, wouldn't you? Beyonce Knowles. Very clever. Excellent. Hi, Ellen. Hope you're okay. Hope you and Steve were all right. All right. I think we've got loads of people in. It's gone five past seven. So let's get started. So um, general knowledge then. Question number one. Round number one. Which former Top Gear presenter is known as Hamster? Which former Top Gear presenter is known as Hamster? I just read your question, Neil, and I tried so hard not to burst out laughing. Famous Williams. Question number two, the Chronicles of Narnia is a children's book series written by which author? 
The Chronicles of Narnia is a children's book series written by which author? Question number three. How many runs does a batsman score in cricket when the ball crosses the boundary rope without touching the floor? How many runs does a batsman score in cricket when the ball crosses the boundary rope without touching the floor? Question number four. Red and which other colour is on the flag of Austria? Red and which other colour is on the flag of Austria? Question number five. On an email, what does CC stand for? On an email, what does CC stand for? I know that one quite well. Quite well when I'm annoyed at work. So on an email, what does CC stand for? Question number six. What is the capital city of Canada? What is the capital city of Canada? Number seven, Bedford Fill Basket, Prodora and Welland are all types of which vegetable? Bedford Fill Basket, Prodora and Welland are all types of which vegetable? Question number eight. This is for two points. Prime Minister Boris Johnson was born in which country? And for an extra point, which city? Boris Johnson was born in which country? And for an extra point, which city? Professor Quiz Whitty. Love it. Think of any more. Question number nine. In motoring, what do the initials DVLA stand for? In motoring, what do the initials DVLA stand for?
And question number 10, and the final question in this round, in which 1994 film does Jim Carrey attempt to rescue the Miami Dolphins mascot? In which 1994 film does Jim Carrey attempt to rescue the Miami Dolphins mascot? Okay, there's a total of 11 points available. Does anybody need me to repeat anything? So question seven, Bedford fill basket, Predora and Welland are all which types of vegetable? Question seven, uh, I've just done question eight for two points. Boris Johnson uh, was born in which country and for an extra point, which city? Question number one. Uh, question number one, which former Top Gear presenter is known as Hamster? Number two, The Chronicles of Narnia is a children's book series written by which author? And question number three, how many runs does a batsman score in cricket when the ball crosses the boundary rope without touching the floor? give you a minute or so just to get those answers in for anyone that uh, had any repeats. I'll give you all the answers in just a minute. Just make sure we're all okay. All right. OK, let's go through some answers then. So round one in the general knowledge round, which former Top Gear presenter is known as Hamster? It is Richard Hammond. Question number two. The Chronicles of Narnia is a children's book series written by which author? It is C.S. Lewis. Question number three. How many runs does a batsman score in cricket when the ball crosses the boundary rope without touching the floor? It's six. Question number four, red and which other colour is on the flag of Austria? It's white. Question number five, on an email, what does CC stands for? stand for? It stands for carbon copy. Question number seven, Bedford Phil Basket, Predora and Welland are all types of Brussels sprout. Ugh. Question number eight, for two points, Boris Johnson was firstly born in America. And he was born in New York. So you can have a point for America. You can have a point for New York. Question number nine. In motoring, DVLA stands for Driver Vehicle Licensing Authority. Driver Vehicle Licensing Authority. And in question number ten. In which 1994 film does Jim Carrey attempt to rescue the Miami Dolphins mascot? It is Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And I have missed question six completely. I'm really sorry for I got too excited. So what I do, I just skip for a minute excitement. So question number six, what is the capital city of Canada? It's Ottawa. I'm really sorry, I'm confused over that. Ah, uh, and then the last one was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, for the film where Jim Carrey, who res tries to rescue the Miami Dolphins mascot, it's called Snowflake as well, which is quite cute. Anyway, I know Brussels sprouts. It's, yeah, no, I didn't know either. So a total of eleven points in that one. Then, so make a note of the ones you got right. Team Hotel, nine points. Very nice. Well done. Uh, the answer to 
number seven, Jess, is Brussels sprout. Team Axelson, eight points out of 11. Fantastic. Very nice. Who knew that Boris Johnson was born in New York? Well, you all do now, obviously. I, you know, but before that. <laughs> seven, brilliant. Yeah, that I'd be interested. Eight, well done, Colin. That's brilliant. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd be interested to know if anyone got the Brussels sprouts. Hi, Team Palmer. Uh, well done, Neil. Seven, excellent. If anyone got the Brussels sprouts question right, be interested to know. Let me know if you got that right. Eight and a half. Nine. Very nice. You're up there at the top then. Nine points. Half a point. Did you get half of the DVLA? Did you get driver, vehicle, something, something? Quiz early. Liz quiz birth the second. No, it doesn't work. You put agency instead of authority. I think you could probably give yourself half a point. Uh, the ball of points are self-awarded. So um, if you uh, if you got half of the uh, DVLA question right, I'd probably give myself half a point as well if I if I'd uh, been in the same situation. Um, <clears throat> so okay then. So round number two, eleven. Fantastic. You got them all right. That's brilliant. I know you've got a, a big team as well, uh, Team Newman. Uh, so you'll you'll have all sorts of uh, ranges of uh, of knowledge across all the different questions, which is brilliant. So round two then is game shows. Um, game shows are probably one of my personally one of my favourite things, and so I'm hoping that some of you will get some of these. Uh, I've tried to do a bit of a mixture of questions from game shows from all across the ages, really. So hopefully there'll be a little bit of something for everyone. So round two then is game shows. And number three is for, uh, number three, number one is for three points to start off with. I know it's a shocker, but it's for three points. So what are the names of the three men who have hosted the Crystal Maze? What are the names of the three men who have hosted the Crystal Maze? That's question one, and you can have a point for each correct man. Tom, I think you've got volunteers to be on your team. You can't leave Hayley on her own. Team player. giving you a little bit longer on that question because there might be some long names. There's no iron team. That's correct. But there is a T. Question number two. Who was the original host of the Krypton Factor? Who was the original host of the Krypton Factor? <laughs> Question number three. Which snooker player assisted Jim Davidson on Big Break? Which snooker player assisted Jim Davidson on Big Break? Question number four, which game show features the character Mr. Chips? Which game show features the character Mr. Chips?
Question number five. How many points is a starter question worth on University Challenge? How many points is a starter question worth on University Challenge? Question number six. How many letters do contestants choose in a game of countdown? How many letters do contestants choose in a game of countdown? Question number seven. During which TV game show were the contestants invited to go wild in the aisles? During which TV game show were the contestants invited to go wild in the aisles? So a theme tune in my head now. Question number eight. George Dawes was the name of the scorekeeper in which comedy game show? George Dawes was the name of the scorekeeper in which comedy game show? Question number nine. Also a member of the Eggheads, which female quizzer was the first person to ever win a million pounds on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Also a member of the Eggheads, which female quizzer was the first person to ever win a million pounds on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And question 10, and the final question in this round. In which year was Deal or No Deal first broadcast? In which year was Deal or No Deal first broadcast? All right. It's a total of 12 points in that round. Can you shout me if you need any repeats? If you've missed anything at all. It might help as well. Just make a little note when I'm going through them, if you can hear them okay. Make a little note of the question if you don't know the answer. Make a little note on your paper and come back to it at the end. But if you've missed it for any reason, then let me know. Uh, yes, you need a full name for the uh, Eggheads one. So number nine, also a member of the Eggheads, which female quizzer was the first person to ever win a million pounds on who wants to be a millionaire. Question number four, which game show features the character Mr. Chips? You do need number nine's full name. All right. Number 10. In which year was Deal or No Deal first broadcast? <clears throat> 
I like egg. I don't mind eggheads. I'm not massively keen on Jeremy Vine. <laughs> Famous Williams. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So let's give you some answers then. So, number one, for three points, the names of the three men who have hosted the Crystal Maze are Richard O'Brien, Ed Tudor Pole, and Richard Ayoade. Richard O'Brien, Ed Tudor Pole, and Richard Ayoade. For a point per man. Question number two, the original host of the Krypton Factor was Gordon Burns. Hi Paul, how are you? You've not you've only missed one round. Well two now technically. So the original host of the Krypton Factor was Gordon Burns. Question number three, the snooker player who assisted Jim Davidson on Big Break was John Virgo. Question number four, which game show features the character Mr. Chips? It's catchphrase. Temple Tudor. <laughs> that is so close. That was his, that was his band, wasn't it? <laughs> Swords of a Thousand Men. Yeah, I think that's the most famous one I did. Uh, question number five. How many points is start a question worth on University Challenge? It's ten. Question number six. How many letters do contestants choose in a game of countdown? They choose nine. During which TV game show were contestants invited to go wild in the aisles? It's Supermarket Sweep. Number eight. Eight, George Dawes was the scorekeeper in Shooting Stars. Number nine, hope you're not going to kick yourselves too much if you don't get this. Uh, also a member of the Eggheads, which female quizzer was the first person to ever win a million pounds on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's Judith Keppel. And number 10, in which year was Deal or No Deal first broadcast? It's 2005. There's a total of 12 points available in that round. The Duff from Above. They did so many of those, didn't they? The Duff from Above. can't remember what the other one they did. I think they did the Fly from On High once. Okay. Total of 12 points then. Eight. Very nice. What's he done? Did you get uh, Judith Keppel's surname in the end, Ellen? Ten and a half. Very nice. What was the half point for, Colin? Six. Ten from Len. Eleven. Very nice. Ten and eleven. Very good. Seven, seven's fine. Excellent. Some very good scores coming through. You can have half a point for, get, for putting Gordon. It's a whole point for getting his whole names. Does that make sense? It's just so close. Judy Kent. It sounds like a superhero's alter ego, doesn't it? It's Judy Kent. Eight and a half, Richard. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, right. Let's move on to Famous Williams then. So, um, number three, round number three is Famous Williams. There are ten questions in this round. It's a nice straightforward one. I would gather that everybody will know all of these people I think so a little bit of a mixture of everyone to understand the questions 
Tell me to do it in a normal accent because that is not going to go well. Six points is absolutely fine. Game shows are not for everybody. But there's some really good scores in there as well. So hopefully you might be able to pick up some points in the famous Williams round. Uh, Ten questions, one point per question. There's no multiple uh, answers here. Uh, and I'll read them straight through. And then hopefully we'll see how we got on with famous Williams. So number one of round three. William Kidd, born in Scotland in 1645, is well remembered for pursuing what activity? Five is fine. It's, you, 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 you turned up. That's, that's OK. William Kidd, born in Scotland in 1645, is well remembered for pursuing what activity? Five points is absolutely fine, honestly. Which famous William was known or is known? I'm back online now. I've just got a very strange, uh, I'll repeat question number two. Uh, I've got a very strange message come up saying that my connection wasn't very good. So can everyone hear me okay? I'm still buffering. <laughs> right. Are my words moving in time with the more? Is my face moving in time with my words? Otherwise, I'm going to look up like the bloke off the Calgon advert. Excellent. Loud and clear. Excellent. Right. Question number two, then. It was, a, was actually a really nice, easy one for you all. Which famous William is known as the Bard of Avon? Which famous William is known as the Bard of Avon? Not like knock knock Avon calling. He doesn't sell lipsticks and foundation. Not that Avon. I'm getting my internet upgraded next month because I complained to Sky about it after last week. Question number three. Which well connected Helicopter pilot married Catherine on the 29th of April 2011 in Westminster Abbey. It's my telephone voice. Do you know a bit of Avon? Which well connected helicopter pilot married Catherine on the 29th of April 2011 in Westminster Abbey? Question number four. Which famous William was an English romantic poet and poet laureate from 1843 until his death in 1850? Which famous William was an English romantic poet and poet laureate from 1843 until his death in 1850? Question number five, which American singer, songwriter and record producer born William 
Adams in 1975 is better known as who? Which American singer, songwriter and record producer born William Adams in 1975 is better known as who? Whom or who? Never know which one to use. You like the Willies round? Excellent. <coughs> I want to rephrase that. Question number six, which famous Scottish knight was made universally famous by his portrayal in the film Braveheart? Which famous Scottish knight was made universally famous by his portrayal in the film Braveheart? Hi, Alex. <laughs> I thought you meant freedom from like, oh, right, you've got away from your family or something like that, but I just realised what you meant. <laughs> Question number seven, which Canadian actor who still has a cult following from an early sci-fi role also played Denny Crane in Boston Legal which Canadian actor who still has a cult following from an early sci-fi role also played Denny Crane in Boston Legal Question number eight. Which English actor holds the Guinness World Record as the longest serving living television actor in a continuous role? Which English actor holds the Guinness World Record as the longest serving living television actor in a continuous role? Question number nine. Which British novelist and playwright was author of Lord of the Flies? Which British novelist and playwright was author of, the, of Lord of the Flies? And question number 10, who was the first Norman King of England reigning from 1066 until his death in 1087? Who was the first Norman King of England reigning from 1066 until his death in 1087? That was the last question of that round. Does anybody need me to repeat anything? Walk on very quiet in the chat box. Number seven, uh, which Canadian actor who still has a cult following from an early sci-fi role, also played Denny Crane in Boston Legal. 
which Canadian actor still has a cult following from an early sci-fi role, also played Denny Crane in Boston Legal. Number eight, which English actor holds the Guinness World Record as the longest serving living television actor in a continuous role? Basically, he's been in Suffolk for ages. And he's alive. Any else? Okay. All right, let's go through some answers then. So, round three was Famous Williams, and the first question, William Kidd, born in Scotland in 1645, is well remembered for pursuing what activity? It's piracy. And I don't think it's like copying films onto DVDs and stuff like that. Uh, question number two, which Famous William was is known as the Bard of Avon? It's William Shakespeare. Number three. Which well-connected helicopter pilot married Catherine on the 29th of April, 2011, in Westminster Abbey? It is Prince William. Number four. Which famous William was an English romantic poet and poet laureate from 1843 until his death in 1850? It's William Wordsworth. Question number five. Which American singer, songwriter and record producer who was born William Adams in 1975 is better known as Will I Am? Question number six. Which famous Scottish knight was made universally famous by his portrayal in the film Braveheart? It is William Wallace. Question number seven, which Canadian actor who still has a cult following from an early sci-fi role also played Denny Crane in Boston Legal? It is William Shatner. Uh, question number eight, which English actor holds the Guinness World Record as the longest serving living television actor in a continuous role? It is William Roche. Roche, Roche, Roche. However you've spelt that is correct. Number nine, which British novelist and playwright was author of The Lord of, Lord of the Flies? It's William Golding. And question number 10, who was, first, who was the first Norman King of England reigning from 1066 until his death in 1087? It is William the Conqueror. So how many did you get right? 10 points available in total. Root Ken Barlow. <laughs> um, <laughs> the round was on famous William, so I'll leave I'll leave it up to you as to whether you get half a point for Ken. Ten points. Six, eight. Nine, very nice. Seven again, that's all right. Seven's fine. Seventy percent. Ken Barlow. <laughs> Your mum says no. Eight, very nice. Well done. Six, eight, nine. Big Willy style, like it. Well done. I hope everybody got the Shakespeare question right, at least. Let me check that, actually. You know what? Uh, let's have a quick look. If you put William the first for William the Conqueror, you can have a little point for that. I have actually just looked up his Wikipedia page and it says William the First, also known as William the Conqueror. So that's fine. Excellent. I cheated. 
Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't think Ken Bard. I think I know who you mean. But um, the question was, which English actor? And Ken Barlow isn't an actor. Okay. Really good scores, though. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. We might do another famous person next week. Famous round, maybe. Don't. Famous. I think or something anyway. So um, the next round is, is a music round. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is split, uh, split into two categories. There'll be 10 general knowledge questions on music, and then we're going to go on to a 10 question bonus round, which I've prepared especially for you. Uh, and then we'll take a break. So I'm not going to give you any answers after the music round. I'll give them all to you after the break, and it will give you a chance to think. So bear with me one moment, please. Just have a little question, I think, on here. Uh, famous Virginias. I wonder if that is a little bit obscure, but I'll have a little look anyway. So let's move on to the music part of the quiz. And like I said, it's split into two categories. First part, I'm going to ask you 10 questions on, on music, general knowledge questions. Then the second part, I'll explain when I get there. Hopefully you'll find it fun. So round number four then. Number one, which British band released the album A Rush of Blood to the Head in 2002? Which British band released the album A Rush of Blood to the Head in 2002? <laughs> famous Richards? Yeah, I'll try that. I'll try Famous Emma's. Oh, no. I'm vain enough that I would do that, but I won't. Uh, question number two. Which American singer had 1991 chart hits with Crazy For You and Rescue Me? Which American singer had 1991 chart hits with Crazy For You and Rescue Me? Hello, Joe. I thought I hadn't seen you. How are you? You're just in time for the music round. Did you catch question one? Because I've literally just started it. Brilliant. Okay. Question number three. In which year did the following songs reach number one in the UK single chart? Mr. Blobby with Mr. Blobby. Mariah Carey with Without You, and Take That with Shaw. In which year did the following songs reach number one in the UK single chart? Mr Blobby with Mr Blobby, Mariah Carey with Without You, and Take That with Shaw. God, I remember that so much, Mr Blobby. I remember that like it was yesterday. I mean, I wasn't born until the year 2000, but, you know. Okay. So, number four. Complete the title of this 1999 Baz Luhrmann track, Everybody's Free to Wear What? Complete the title of the 1990, film, 1990 Baz Luhrmann track, Everybody's Free to Wear what? <laughs> Just been reminded I wasn't born in 2000. It was 99. <laughs> Question number five. In which year did Culture Club have a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon? In which year did Culture Club have a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon? Oh, 
And if you've never heard of this, if you, I'm assuming you've heard of the number four, of number four, this song. If you haven't, give it a little download. It was huge when it came out. Question number five. Cliff Richard topped the 1988 Christmas charts with which single? Cliff Richard topped the 1988 Christmas charts with which single? For your time. 1988 for that one, or 1999 for Baz Luhrmann. Number seven, Shape of You was a 2017 hit for which British artist? Shape of You was a 2017 hit for which British artist? Excuse me. <laughs> Question number eight. Getting to Know You is one of the best known songs from which musical? Getting to Know You is one of the best known songs from which musical? Do you know what? It's like it's, it's the same for me. Phrases when I'm in the pub and someone just says to me, You're round. Oh. I just thought it meant get the drinks in, but clearly not. <laughs> Question number nine is for two points. Two points for this one. Worth a guess if you don't know. John Travolta. And Olivia Newton John topped the UK charts twice in 1978 with songs from the movie Grease. Which two songs were they? John Travolta and Olivia Newton John topped the UK charts twice in 1978 with songs from the movie Grease. Which songs were they? One point for each correct song. If you don't know, it's worth just putting a couple down, just in case you might get one of them right. Pick yourself up a nice little point. And question number 10, James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer for which Welsh band? James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer for which Welsh band? Probably one of my own favourite bands of all time. James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer for which Welsh band? I'm not going to give you any answers just yet until after the break. Does anybody need any of those 10 repeating before I move on to the music bonus? There's a lot of me in this quiz sometimes. I'm finding the Miami Dolphins one is a big reference to things I like. Oh, 
100%. They're one of the greatest bands of all time. Number 10, James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer for which Welsh band? Do you know what? I need to do a cheese round because that is my, that is the love of my life. That and the dog. Does anybody need any more of those repeating at all? Okay. Excellent. Let's move on to the next part then. So the music bonus round is all to do with lockdown. I'll get the dog later, I promise. I'll get it to come up and have a cuddle. Uh, so the music bonus round is all to do with isolation or lockdown uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you uh, 10 songs all to do with lockdown or staying in or not being able to do something or something to do with um, being indoors, self-isolation, that sort of thing. Uh, and all you need to do is tell me who the band is. So, what we can do is I have 10, uh, 10, yeah, there are 10 exactly. So I'm just going to read you 10 songs. So just put the band and you'll get a point each. So number one, Don't Stand So Close To Me. Number one is Don't Stand So Close To Me. Number two is The Lazy Song. You can see where these are going, can't you? Number two is The Lazy Song. Do you know what? Phrase of those trainers would be worth a fortune these days. Number three is enjoy the silence. Number three is enjoy the silence. Number four is ghost town. Number four is Ghost Town. Number five, Sit Down. Number five is Sit Down. <laughs> Fraz, okay. That's what Hayley was calling you. I just feel like I, you know, I needed to be given permission first. So now I'm sorry to remind you of lockdown. Number seven, can't feel my face. Number seven is can't feel my face. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Have I have I come back? <laughs> I'll repeat number six. Am I back? Guess who's back? Back again, Emma's back, don't tell your friends. Right, okay, I'll do number six for you again then. So number six is I'm going slightly mad. That's appropriate for what's just happened, isn't it? 
little buff, buffering face over here. So number six was I'm going slightly mad. Slim Shady. I don't think you call me Slim Shady. Fat Shadow, maybe. Very pixelated. It's probably not the worst thing in the world. Number seven is can't feel my face. Number seven is can't feel my face. Or in your case, you can't see it if I'm pixelated, but it's can't feel my face. <laughs> Just got a picture of me with my face in my hand. Uh, <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> question number eight. Nothing lasts forever. Question number eight is nothing lasts forever. Number nine is living on the ceiling. Number nine is living on the ceiling. And number ten, that's life. Number 10 is, that's life. There's the dog, if you can see her. Hello. Are you okay? You're good. Girl. For those of you who wanted to see the pup, here she is. Yeah, good girl. Uh, so does anybody need anything repeating before we go on to a little break? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that you knew I had a new got it delivered at lunchtime. Uh, yeah, and here's Lottie. Uh, so, yeah, it's very comfortable. I was getting a bit of a bad back on a dining chair, uh, working from home. So, uh, yeah, I had to get myself up. Uh, To get yourself a, an office chair. So uh, yeah, are you okay? Okay, okay. Um, so is there any repeats? Because I know I, uh, I I kind of disappeared and went a bit uh, pixelated in the middle of all of that. Uh, so does anybody need any repeats? We'll go on to a short little break. Um, we're right on time actually, which is excellent. Oh, I told you, didn't I? I messaged. We were talking on Messenger. And I said I had a new office chair. Uh, so that's how you knew that I had one. I feel a bit stupid now. Because I literally thought, I was like, wow, that's really observant. Because you notice the fact that I can, have a, I can have a little spin. I tell you what, my days are going to be so much fun. Uh, so number nine of the quiz was living on the ceiling. Living on the ceiling was number nine. And if there aren't any more, number eight was nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Okay. Are there any more? Okay. It's now ten past eight. As I say every week, don't go anywhere. Don't close your screen or the uh, the app or anything like that down. Stay with me um, on the app. Um, so, because uh, I'm literally just going to pop away for a few minutes. You can go if you want to. I'll be quite, you know, disappointed, I guess, that, you know, if I come back and no one will be here. Uh, but stay on the app, stay on the screen 
all I literally do is turn off my microphone and cover the camera up just while I go to the loo and go and get a nice cup of coffee. Um, so, um, it's now ten past eight, so I'll come back at, shall we say, roughly just before 20 past, give you all almost 10 minutes to go and do whatever you need to do. I don't need to know. Uh, and then we'll come back and I'll give you some answers for the music round. Okay, see you in a minute.
Good girl, come on, Ed. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> right. Hello, are we all back? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are we back? Oh, we've got most people back in. Um, so a minute or so late, the dog was just going to the loo. <clears throat> okay. Just give everyone a few more seconds just to get back to their back to their seats. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you Let's go. Can everyone hear me all right? I'm not pixelated or stopped for any reason. Oh, hello, Murray and May. How are you both? <laughs> Excellent. Right, okay. I'm loud and clear then from the sounds of it. Dog's just going uh, mental with one of her toys there. Uh, so you might be able to hear some squeaking in the background. Uh, she's got a cuddly banana, which she likes throwing around. So I'm going to go through all of the music quiz answers. Uh, and then we'll go through the points at the end. So, in the music general knowledge category, number one, which British band released the album A Rush of Blood to the Head in 2002? It was Coldplay. Number two, which American singer um, had 1991 chart hits with Crazy For You and Rescue Me was Madonna. Uh, oh, did you get the first? Did you get the answers, um, Ellen? So number one was Coldplay. Number two was Madonna. Excellent. Uh, number three, Mr. Blobby, Without You by Mariah Carey and Take That With Shaw were all number one UK single chart hits in 1994. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, the title of the Baz Luhrmann track, Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen. Number five, in which year did Culture Club have a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon? It was 1983. Question number six, Cliff Richard topped the 1988 Christmas charts with which single? It was Mistletoe and Wine. Question number seven, Shape of You was a 2000 hit, 2017 hit for Ed Sheeran. Question number eight, Getting to Know You is one of the best known songs from which musical? It's from The King and I. Question number nine, there's two points available. John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John topped the UK charts twice with songs from Greece. They were You're the One That I Want and Summer Nights. A point each for each correct answer. And number 10, James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer for which Welsh band? It's the Manic Street Preachers. May got Ed Sheeran. Oh, well done, May. That's excellent. Brilliant. Well done, you. So there's 11 points available in that section. So count your answers up for that, and then I'll move on to the next bit, and then you can have them both together. So the music bonus round, based on, loosely based on lockdown. Uh, number one, Don't Stand So Close To Me is by The Police. Number two, the lazy song is by Bruno Mars. 
Number three, Enjoy the Silence is by Depeche Mode. Uh, number four, Ghost Town is by The Specials. Number five, Sit Down was by James. Number six, I'm Going Slightly Mad is by Queen. Number seven, Can't Feel My Face is by The Weeknd. Number eight, Nothing Lasts Forever is by Echo and the Bunnymen. Number nine, Living on the Ceiling is by Blamange. And number 10, That's Life is by Frank Sinatra. Number one in this round, Don't Stand So Close to Me, was by The Police. I think, Zoe, did you mean you meant number one in the lockdown round, the bonus round? If not, the answer to number one in the general knowledge quiz, general knowledge bit of the music round is by Coldplay. So, did you get all of the lockdown songs correct as well? Total of 10 in that one. So, a complete total then between those two rounds within the music section is, uh, excellent, okay, is uh, 21. So out of 21 then for that whole part, make a note of your answer. Uh, number 10, That's Life, was by Frank Sinatra. So you're looking at a total for both rounds out of 21. Seven each, 14, 18 out of 21, that's brilliant. Uh, 15, Colin, excellent. 14, T. Maxson. Well done. Sixteen across both rounds. Very good. Well done, May again. Um, so some good, really good scores on those, actually. I think that the, perhaps the general music part was a little bit harder than what I've done the last couple of weeks. I just want to try and make sure that it covers a few genres across several years so that it's um, it's appealing for, for everyone, hopefully. Um, so, in the, <laughs> in the next round, then, this is where most people tend to pick up quite a lot of points. It's the kids round. Uh, so there are 10 questions in this round uh, for the kids round. So uh, grown-ups, if you've got kids with you that can help with this round, brilliant. Um, I hope I've tried to make it as good as possible for, for all the kids um, that are watching. And uh, if you're on your own or you don't have any kids, don't have any young kids with you uh, at the moment, then just guess. Um, so, number one in the kids round, in the film Frozen, what is the name of Chris Christoph's pet reindeer? In the film Frozen, what is the name of Christoph's pet reindeer? Pop. Question number two. In what country is the Great Barrier Reef? In what country is the Great Barrier Reef? Question number three. What are baby goats called? What are baby goats called? Did Lily answer the frozen one? So sweet. Number three. What are baby goats called? Okay. 
Number four, what date in November is bonfire night celebrated on? What date in November is bonfire night celebrated on? Question number five. What is the only mammal that can fly? What is the only mammal that can fly? Question number six. What is the name of SpongeBob SquarePants boss who owns and operates the Krusty Krab? What is the name of SpongeBob SquarePants boss who owns and operates the Krusty Krab? Question number seven. In what game is the word love used? It's a sport, really. In what sport is the word love used? <laughs> Do you know what? If you get if you get a SpongeBob SquarePants, what he's commonly known as for one point, and you can have an extra point if you can get his whole name. Because that's very impressive, Murray. Very impressive. I don't know don't think I could do that. Knew the answer to it already. But I don't think I'll get his whole name. Definitely have to take a bonus point if you can get his whole name. For number six. So question number seven, what sport was the, is the word love used? It's fine, take a, take a bonus point if you get it right. I'm just going to have to a little, uh, a little Google. Um, question number eight. How many sides does a hexagon have? How many sides does a hexagon have? Come on, Paul, don't tell me you don't know who SpongeBob is. It's ledge. So question eight, how many sides does a hexagon have? Question number nine is for two points. Two points available. What are the names of Harry Potter's parents? Obviously, their surname is Potter. So just need the first names of Harry Potter's parents. You can have a point for each one. I've given, I said I'll give a bonus point for a sponge boss's Sponge Bob's boss's whole name, so I've just changed the overall scores that's available. And um, I know Tracy, aren't you proud of me? I've got a maths, I'm actually putting maths questions in. Didn't know the answer to it though, I don't think. See, so at one point for the name of his mum, and one point for the name of his dad. Dad's. Dog's name. You're scrabbling for a bonus point there a little bit. 
I'm going to have to say no. So I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes googling Spongebob's boss's whole name. And question number 10, and the final question in this round, how many strings does a violin have? How many strings does a violin have? Okay, if you could let me know quickly on the chat if you need, uh, or any other method uh, that you normally contact me on, uh, if you need any questions repeating. I'm always doing that. Mate, hopefully this round has been perfect for you and Anne Murray. It sounds like you've smashed it. Wish I could play the violin. I've started to play the drums. The violin is very clever if you can play that. Mike plays the spoons. <laughs> 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 right i haven't had any requests for any repeated questions uh so i'll give you some answers then i just need to look up one question that's full name right okay So, in the kids' round then, good luck kids. In Frozen, what is the name of Kristoff's pet reindeer? He's called Sven. Question number two, in what country is the Great Barrier Reef? It's in Australia. Question number three, what are baby goats called? They're called kids. Number four, what date in November is bonfire night? It's on the 5th of November. Number five, what is the only mammal that can fly? It's a bat. Number six, what is the name of SpongeBob SquarePants boss who owns and operates the Krusty Krab? He's more commonly known as Mr. Krabs. Murray, I will be amazed if you got this because I didn't know it and I love SpongeBob. He's called Eugene. Eugene Harold Krabs, but simply better known as Mr. Krabs. If you've got Eugene Krabs, Murray, you can have an extra point. Because that is amazing. Well done. So, number seven. In which sport is the word love used? It's most commonly used in tennis. You've got Eugene Krabs as well. He's got a middle name. Isn't that cute? Don't expect you to. But if you put Mr. Krabs or Eugene Krabs, absolutely amazing if you knew his first name as well. So brilliant. I was going to say, I got you got Krabs. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so tennis is the answer to number seven. Uh, number eight, how many sides does a hexagon have? Uh, it has six. Uh, for two points, what are the names, uh, first names of Harry Potter's parents? They are called James and Lily. And number 10, I think May got this right. How many strings does a violin have? It has four. So, in that kids' round then, folks, there's a total of 12 points available. Thanks to Murray, we got an, we got, uh, an extra point there if you've got Mr. Krabs' full name. So, add those answers up, make a note of them on your paper, and then we can add them all up at the end of the quiz. This is where most people get quite a few points. Seven, 
Excellent. Well done, Paul. Eight. Well done, Colin. Tom, the Newmans, got 11. What did you get wrong? 12. I'm so impressed. 11. Well done. Wouldn't have known Harry Potter's parents. 12, 11. Excellent. Did the boys help you mostly with uh, with your 11? <laughs> well done, Paul. Uh, 12, 8. Mike, I think you have found your level. Oh, 11. Well done, Murray and May. Well done. That's excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, 11. Hello, Lily. Um, okay. Some really good scores then. Right. Good. I'm assuming you want me to keep that round in. I like to be able to include everybody that's sitting and watching. Um, so that uh, there's a little bit of something for everyone. <laughs> So how much help how much help did you need? <laughs> oh well done, Samir. Excellent. Well done. That's excellent. You got you got uh, loads of those right. It's brilliant. You got all of them right, actually. Just looking back on that Team Thompson's score of 12. That's amazing. So let's move on then. Round number six of seven is uh, food and drink. So there are 10 questions on food and drink because I think most people that uh, generally like to have uh, um, like to have these done. Yeah, I did. Uh, um, um, what I might try and do is do the uh, the, the kids round earlier because I'm aware that uh, you guys have got uh, kids stuff to put to, to put to bed and things like that as well. Um, so what I'll try and do is perhaps put that in a little bit earlier. Um, even put it in on the first or second round, just so that you've got uh, the option then if you need to put any young ones to bed. Um, so yeah, absolutely no problem. I'll I'll give that a little switch around for next week. Uh, so number question uh, question uh, round even uh, number six um, is food and drink and there are ten questions so I'm going to start with question number one because that's generally how an order goes so question number one what is a bisque what is a bisque spelt b i s q u e no worries I'm glad they're all right. So it's spelled B I S Q U E. Question number two What is the name of the Spanish sausage that is seasoned with smoked paprika? What is the name of the Spanish sausage that is seasoned with smoked paprika? Paprika, I don't really know yet. Question number three. What is unusual? about the tomato-based soup known as gazpacho. What is unusual about the tomato-based soup known as gazpacho? Bear me a second. Question number four, mocha is a coffee usually flavoured with what? Mocha is a coffee usually flavoured with what?
Question number five. In French cooking, what does en croute mean? In French cooking, what does en croute mean? So it's E-N. And croute is C-R-O-U-T-E. I'm sorry for my horrible pronunciation if I've got that wrong. The only French cooking I know of is fries. So I apologise. So French cooking, what does en croute mean for number five? Question number six. Why have cotton, when you can have silk, was used to advertise which chocolate? Why have cotton, when you can have silk, was used to advertise which chocolate? Question number seven. The cocktail of vodka, spicy ginger beer and lime juice is known as a Moscow what? The cocktail of vodka, spicy ginger beer and lime juice is known as a Moscow what? Question number eight. What two drinks would you mix together to create a snake bite? What two drinks would you mix together to create a snake bite? There is nothing on this earth more painful. Obviously, I've not given birth. But for my experience, more painful than a snake bite hangover. You know when you drink something and you drink it and it just it makes you feel so ill that you just never touch it ever again. A bit like me in salad, I suppose. Uh, question number nine. In Scotland, what is unusual about a lawn sausage? In Scotland, what is unusual about a lawn sausage? Lawn is spelt L-O-R-N-E. You know, you just have you have something, and it just brings back just the most awful memories. And just, I've never been so ill in my life on snake bite. Ooh. So, in Scotland, what is unusual about a lawn sausage? For question number nine. So, the last one then, question number ten. What fruit is traditionally used in an Eve's pudding? What fruit is traditionally used in an Eve's pudding? Let me know if you need anything uh, repeating. Thanks, Tom. I know you can definitely remember the time when I used to drink uh, uh, snake bite. It's the same reason I don't drink uh, a lot of things anymore. Uh, so question number six, why have cotton when you can have silk was used to advertise which chocolate? Oh, it's just a bit of black current in it as well, if I remember rightly. So, any more repeats of the, any of the questions? Hopefully, didn't make that one too difficult. Red diesel. Yeah, it's a bit of black on it. Oh, God. Number seven. The cocktail of vodka, spicy ginger beer and lime juice is known as a Moscow what? 
cocktail of vodka, spicy ginger beer and lime juice is known as a Moscow what? Okay, is everyone ready for some answers? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's go through some answers then. So the food and drink round then. Question number one, what is a bisque? It is a shellfish soup. It says typically made from lobster, but as long as you've got a shellfish soup, it's fine for a point. Number two, what is the name of the Spanish sausage that is seasoned with smoked paprika? It is chorizo. Question number three, what is unusual about the tomato-based soup known as gazpacho? It is served cold. Number four, mocha is a coffee usually flavoured with which substance? It's usually flavoured with chocolate. Oh, I miss Costa. Uh, number five, in French cooking, what does en croute mean? It means in pastry. Uh, number six, why have cotton when you can have silk was used to advertise Galaxy. Question number seven, a cocktail of vodka, spicy ginger beer and lime juice is known as a Moscow mule. Question number eight, what two drinks would you mix together to create a snake bite? You would mix together cider and lager. Number nine, in Scotland, what is unusual about a lawn sausage? It is square. And question number 10, what fruit is traditionally used in an Eve's pudding? It's apples. So the last one was apples. So those questions are all out of 10. Add those up and make a note on your paper before we move on to the last round, which is the family fortunes round. I've hopefully got some really fun answers, uh, questions for you. 10 out of 10. Excellent. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. 7, 6, 9, 10. 10. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> I don't think I'd have known what uncroup means. Do you know what? I love a square sausage as well? It fits in the bread better, doesn't it? Uh, eight. Well done. Uh, Mike, that's excellent. Square sausage. I don't know why they taste better, innit? It's like when you have a cup of tea out of a china cup. It just tastes better. Nine in total. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done. Eight. Very nice. Well done. Team Finch. I think that round looked probably a little bit more agreeable for people then this week, hopefully. Brilliant. Okay. Is everyone else still with us? I've got loads of people that are watching. Uh, so um, you only got two of them. Hopefully, that's the fun of doing it with a family and doing it with a range of uh, ages and uh, different interests. Is that so that you you can uh, you can all be part of it, which is which is you know what's important. Um, so uh, let's have a quick look then. So if there's any more scores to come through, if not, make them a note of them. Um, and then what we'll do. Uh, is we'll go on to the next round. Do you know what, Paul? I'm an egg and chips sort of girl myself, to be fair. Um, there's a little cafe in Hemel that our team go to, which I'm really missing at the moment. And I have corned beef, egg and chips, and it is just the, oh, heaven. 
nothing on croup for me there. So let's move on to the family fortunes round then. So for those of you that didn't do this last week, um, it was uh, <laughs> a long sausage. <laughs> Lawn sausage is perfect because it's just it's square, it fits up, you know, in a in a sandwich or on a bit of bread. Uh brilliant. A set for it's exactly it. It's got an hour with with it with corned beef. Oh, that's amazing. I really miss that at the moment. Um not that I can do it at home, of course, but it's not the same, is it? Um so uh, we've been to the windmill in Hemel a few times, and the other one's just called Malin's Cafe. And uh, it's only a, uh, only about sort of uh 100, 200 yards away from uh, from the Hemel office really lovely little cafe down there little greasy spoon and it's absolutely wonderful and uh, yeah this is the little things you miss when uh, when you're not allowed to do it um but yeah we we had some real laughs on this I'm hoping some point in the future uh, whatever normal will be we can get back to that and just doing the, the little things I think uh, you don't even realize you're going to miss when you haven't got them uh so family fortunes then for anyone that didn't do this part of the quiz last week or anyone that's new to the quiz this week because I know I've got a few more a few more followers this week which is brilliant so I'm going to read you uh I've actually got one two three four five I've got six questions tonight I only did three last week because I wanted to do a little test just to make sure everybody enjoyed it before I, I went full on so um what will happen here is you I'm going to read you out a question a family fortune style question I need you to write one answer uh to what you think the top answer of the survey gave so the top answer will get five points the second answer will get three points and the third answer will get one point so if i gave you an example it's the example i used last week if i said to you can you name an animal you couldn't fit into a mini the top answer is elephant so you would take five points the second most popular answer is giraffe so you would take three points and the third most popular answer is a blue whale so you would take one point so depending on the answer you give will depend on how many points you get so it's how popular you think these are genuine questions uh, that have come up in family fortunes in the past and so just give your one what you think the top answer is if it's in the top three you're probably going to get some points for it Am I still buffering? Have I come back? Am I back properly for everybody? Excellent. Right, brilliant. Oh, I'm getting all your messages through now. Brilliant. Okay, there's loads of messages. Wow. Okay, excellent. Uh, uh, did everyone hear the first question? And the explanation about... Uh... Excellent. Brilliant. Right, I'm back now. So did everyone hear the first question? Or do I need to repeat it? I'll repeat it anyway. So uh, oh, I'm still on dialing a little bit, still on AOL. Uh, so the first question was, name a reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom. 
So put one answer down. If it comes, if it's the top, if it's the top answer, you get five points. If your answer is the second most popular one on the survey, you get three points. And the last one, you get one point. Excellent. Right. So let's move on to question two then. So number two, a bit of a think of this. I think. So number two is name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. Name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. Oh my God, my life is a complete nightmare. <laughs> okay. Hang on, two seconds, folks. Okay, so you can hear me okay now. So question one then, if I do question one again, really so name a reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom. Okay, I think it looks like most people got number two, but I'll repeat it. I'll go back there anyway. Let's just pretend we've started again. So number one, name a reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom. Number two, name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. My wine is probably the best answer you could get. It's not one of the answers, but absolutely amazing. Name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. <laughs> Number three, name a country that starts with the letter A. Name a country that starts with the letter A. Okay, Richard, question one. Uh, Richard, can you just confirm you can hear me all right before I repeat them? Just put yes or something. Excellent. So number one then, Richard, uh, name a reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom. And number two was name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. Name a liquid in your kitchen. Number three, name a country that starts with the letter A. Okay. Number four, name something appealing about working from home. Number four, name something appealing about working from home. Number five, be very careful on this one. But number five is name a behaviour that a dog would get away with that a, that a person couldn't away with. So name a behaviour that a dog can get away with but a person couldn't get away with. Mm -hmm. 
And finally, number six in this round, and it's actually the last question of the whole quiz. Number six, name the most annoying thing that other drivers do on the road. Name the most annoying thing that other drivers do on the road. All right. Does anybody need me to repeat any of those questions? I apologise for the uh, uh, couple of the interruptions we had early on in that round. So if anyone missed anything, let me know now before I go through the answers. Okay. Right. I'm going to go through some answers then. So make a note of how many points you get on each of these because it's, it's, it's varying points. So number one was name a reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom. The top is ugly. These are all genuine. And you can take one point if you put you had to get rid of it because of a divorce. So the, the top answer was broken then ugly, and then divorce. So five, three, and one. Uh, so number two, name a liquid in your kitchen that you hope no one ever accidentally drinks. The top answer was hand wash. Well, I should say, I shouldn't say hand wash. Washing up liquid, not hand wash. Got, I got that on myself. Five points if you put washing up liquid. Three points if you wrote down vinegar. And one point if you wrote cooking oil. So the top answer was washing up liquid. The second answer was vinegar. And the third answer was cooking oil. Uh, the top answer for number one was broken. So the reason you might get rid of an old family heirloom is because it's broken. <clears throat> number three name a country starts with the letter a the top answer for five points was australia in at second was afghanistan for three points and the third most popular answer was america for one point okay I'd have probably put those the other way around. I've probably got Australia, America, and then maybe Austria. I don't know. So, um, number four, name something appealing about working from home. For five points, the top answer, and there are two, it's either no clothes slash dress code. Why you would work at home with no clothes on is beyond me. So, Dress code is the top answer. Started to call my pajama, my pajamas uh, business trousers, which seems to be working for me. The second answer for three points is flexible hours. And the third most popular answer on the survey for one point is the commute. <laughs> How do you know I haven't? <laughs> three points and then it's the commute the great commute for one point or lack of commute i suppose number five name a behavior a dog would get away with that a person wouldn't the top answer for five points was going to the toilet in public number two was scratching for three points and the third most popular answer on the survey was licking strangers for one point so for five points is going to the toilet in public. The second most popular answer for three points was scratching, and then it's licking strangers for one point. And then the last question then, name the most annoying thing that other drivers do on the road. Five points, the most popular answer was not using indicators for five points. The second most popular answer for three points was cutting you up. Or cutting you off. However, you want that. And the third most popular answer for one point was speeding. Okay.
So there's a total, I think, the total available points is 30 in that round. So the whole quiz overall, add those, uh, whatever points you got in that last final fortunes round, add them to whatever you Hundred and six points available in total. Uh, number six. Uh, name the most annoying thing other drivers do on the road. Five points. The top answer was not using indicators. The second most popular answer for three points is cutting you up, and the third most popular answer for one point is speeding. And now you're adding everything up from the whole quiz out of a total of 106. Ah, oh, I'm getting the scores coming in already. 71 out of 105, that's fantastic. It's out of 106, uh, just to care, because I had an extra point halfway through. 63 is absolutely fine, 71 is fantastic, well done. Uh, Paul, is that six points out of the entire quiz if it is I'm a little bit worried uh 74 team Atkinson, well done let's get quizzical 79 and a half 106 wow that's an incredible score okay so some really good scores coming in then who else have we got we still, we still know from a few people uh team padwick are you still with us team padwick let me know what you got if you're still listening um 79 and a half out of 106 Excellent. When you say only got 68 and a half, that's still pretty good. Still very good. 61 and a half in the first six rounds. Wow. So it's the family fortunes round then, because there's a there's a, several points. Uh to <laughs> do you know what it's really funny. I'm, sometimes I when I did the uh, family fortunes bit last week, and I, obviously I've done it again tonight. Well done, eighty-three. I've really wondered what answers you put for some of those. Like name a behaviour a dog would get away with. Uh, I'd love to see some of the, the the answers you put. So okay, you got some amazing scores. Well done, eighty-three is fantastic out of one hundred and six in total. That's excellent. Um, so okay, right. Do you like the family fortunes round? I quite like putting it together. It's quite a good. It's quite good fun doing it. Um, there's still a few couple of teams we haven't heard of, haven't heard from in uh, in total. Uh, team Thompson, how did you guys get on in total? And Team Padwick, if you're still with us as well, um, brilliant. Thanks, Richard. That's really really nice of you to say. Um, it's um, <laughs> do you know what? A dog licking bums or sniffing bums is uh is uh yeah licking and licking those as well. Uh, Paul, oh no, they weren't on there as well. Um, so uh, one of the answers was humping as well. I don't know if anyone wrote that, but it didn't even it didn't it didn't come in the in the top categories. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Neil and Team Mac, rest Team Anderson. That's really kind of you. Um, so see them again next week. Then I'm going to let you all go and have uh, a lovely rest of your evening. And uh, thank you very much. It's really kind of you. Uh, I'll let you. I'll let you get on for the rest of the evening. Uh, the video will be on YouTube pretty much straight away. So if you know anyone that might enjoy it, and uh, well done, seventy-seven and a half. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you have fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, no worries. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. That's some really, really, really nice comments coming through. Um, so I'm going to leave you all to the rest of your evening now. Go and make yourself a nice little cup of tea, pour a glass of wine, whatever else you, is you do with your Wednesday evenings. And uh, I shall hopefully, with any luck, I'll write another one. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. Bye.